Hey heroes, welcome back. Sir Ezra and Sir Matt, we are joined by a special guest, Nicole Sedai of the White Aja. How's it going, Nicole? It's going pretty well. I'm actually super excited about this. I've been looking forward to it. So it's going yeah. very well here in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, nice. absolutely. Uh, uh, mountain number. Like mine and me and me and <laughs> Sir Matt. This is our region. Yeah, man. Oh, <laughs> oh, my. So what how about it, uh, we would like to welcome you here, Sir Ezra. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> yes. what I thought. That's what I thought. I'm going to get ganged up on. Get ready for this. Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, no, this is cool. This is fun. We've been wanting to do this and, and I'm super happy that this is happening because Nicole has been around for a long time. We were just talking about how like <laughs> she's been supporting projects of ours for such a long time. So, and actually, uh, on that note, uh, Sir Matt, we, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Nicole had recommended or we had said something about wheel of time once upon a time if that works. Um, mm -hmm. And yep. you, it prompted you to get the series and maybe start reading it. Is that right? Is that correct? Yes. When, when uh, Ben the Knee was formerly known as Second Breakfast Podcast, you guys, I think it might have been your fine wine episode. I think you guys are like eating steak and drinking red wine or something yeah. like that. But you guys talked about um, just different fantasy uh, series that you guys loved. And Ezra, you mentioned The Will of Time. And... I immediately, like, I remember pausing the episode and, like, going in and searching for it and going out and getting that first book. Yeah. I, I am so glad. I don't even remember. I need. I should go back and listen to what my pitch was because I know I talked about it for just, like, a little bit. And um, I've actually started working on my pitch and, and how people, I, like, when I come across people who haven't read it, like, because I so want them to read it to get ready for the show <laughs> and, and, you know, all of that. So, um, like, Matt and I have been talking for quite a long time about how intoxicating the series is. And so that's really what this is about. It's kind of like a non-spoiler, you know, review about why individuals should get into the Wheel of Time. I mean, here's the thing. So, Nicole, it's a, what was it, a 14 book series, right? So it's a big commitment, big time commitment. But like, how has it been, you, you, where are you currently at in your, in your read through? I am almost done with the fourth book. I've probably got about another quarter of the book left. So been pretty quickly chugging away at that one. Nice. So almost finished with book four. Right, right. But now, now I, I, here's, so how long have you been, how long did it take you to get to where you are? Have you been working on this like over the last year or so? Or like how long have you been um, reading? Originally, I had started to read it along side a friend of mine i had told him about the series and so we would kind of read it together um and then so we were kind of pacing ourselves initially in the first and second book and i feel like we actually made it through those really quickly and then with the third book um life just got busy for him and so initially i waited and then uh i couldn't wait any longer <laughs> so i started i just kind of left it behind yeah. Uh, and kind of continued that way. So I would say we've probably been working on the series somewhere between a year and a half and two years. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it is sort of one of those, um, it's an undertaking. I mean, uh, gosh, Matt, when we started in January, well, I, technically January. December, yeah. uh, 2019. Yeah, December. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that, that that's when we started. So you know, the, it, I actually back in the day, I um, God, like probably ten years ago, tried to read it, and I got to, um, you know, you, you start reading a new book, and it's like, okay, cool, like here's these characters, they're out on this road, it's kind of cool. Uh, I got to the Trolloc attack, and I was like, oh, this is pretty awesome. And then I just didn't make it much further than that. I don't know what it was, but it just once they got on the road, I was kind of, I just. I don't know. I have, I had, a, I have, I think I've also found that I have a hard time actually reading books. Um, I, I do way better with audiobooks. Like, so mm. if it, I mean, audio, I, well, let me say this. I pretty much only do audiobooks. Uh, at, at, at this point, I just can't. I, if I have to actually sit and read it, I, my mind's going other places. I just, I'm much better of a learner that way. So now in doing the audiobook version of it, I mean, I'm blitzing through it, right? Because the story right. is amazing and it's in the format that I can uh, process. Uh, it's just, just how I, how I learn. So, um, and, and, you know, I was like, man, how, and I just find myself now I'm like, why did I put this down? Like, what was yeah. I doing? <laughs> I mean, what, you know what I mean? Like, what was yeah. I thinking? 
Well, I, I, I get you. Like when you're when you actually have that tangible, like that book, and you're you're flipping through it and stuff. I mean, you can get so either so sucked in, or if you have a lot of stuff going on around you, it can be kind of hard to stick with it, you know. Right. Or you can eat, get distracted, and then or you have stuff to do. So I love audio. This was before as well. Kindles. Yeah. Like this was before Kindles. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, we're talking, I think it was like 2009 or something like that. So yeah. I was like, uh, you know, like it's, right. It was, <laughs> yeah. 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 That's awesome. So let's talk about, I mean, just this series as a whole. Um, Nicole, what has been, uh, like, I guess your favorite aspect of, of these first several books? Like, um, what, what's something that really stood out to you that you, that you like and that you're looking forward to, you know, in the series? I think one of the things that has been surprising is how how many different groups of people and cultures you just every time you think you have met everyone you're going to meet in this world like there comes another group of people I, I remember yeah. when uh, uh, introducing the Sean Chan I was yeah. like oh my god more people and yes. uh, and just being continued to uh, continuing to be introduced to more and more cultures and uh, you know like new armies you know it's yeah. there's no shortage of people fighting for their piece of the power for sure <laughs> yeah <And> so <laughs> that has been that's been a really surprising aspect of it but it's also been really enjoyable because um i get to wait until the end of that 14th book to decide like which which group of people i like the most and if i were in that world who would i want to be siding with yeah, absolutely. I, I think that is something that, um, you know, Matt, when we were first going through the first book, it was sort of like, you can't, I mean, it's hard to explain to people how um, you think, okay, you know, we've, we've made this amount of progression, we're probably going to level off for a little bit. And you might start to level off for just a moment. And then he just <laughs> takes you right back up again. And you're like, when is this going to come back? To, when are we going to level off for a bit? And I think that's sort of what makes it to me, like an intoxicating, like an addictive read almost. So I don't know, Sir Matt, you know, thoughts? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm with you. I mean, yeah, I, I thought in the first book, right, um, for me, it was like, okay, you get to get, okay, you're learning all these characters, all these things are going on, you get to the Trolloc attack, and it's like, okay, now I'm blitzing. Okay, then it's like, all right, you know, we get to Shatter Logoth, right, with Mordeth and the dagger and everything. Okay, what's going on? Tam gets attacked. Okay, like, you know what I mean? It's right, like, right. Or not Tam, but Tom. It's like, oh my God, yeah. like, we're, you know, what's going on? Um, and then for me, there was kind of a lull af right after that when we're dealing with the Tinkers and, oh, and sure. Like, yeah. So they're, they're all split up. And I was like, okay. Um, then, <laughs> so that was the level off a little bit for me. And then you hit, um, then you hit when they all get to Camelin and they all run back into each other and Rand's like, what? They meet Loyal and it's like, okay, we're going back up. And then you get into the ways a little bit. Okay, all right, all right, level up, level up. Then you get to the end and it's just like, like pure yeah. adrenaline. And I kind of feel like that's what this, I felt like this book was very similarly paced. Yeah. Um, like yeah, the the beginning, like the first, the first like 10 chapters or whatever was just like, oh my gosh, it's because there's just so much fall off from the last book. And actually I will say, one of the things I really, really liked and something I just noticed was when I was starting this book, um, the opening chapters, you could start with this book, I feel like. I mean, I don't yeah. think you should, but I think right. if you start with this book, sure. I think in the in the first 10 chat in the first like 10 chapters, it is a really good job of saying like, hey, these are the events that happened. Um, but he does it in like a really like kind of cool way. And it was just something I just noticed. Uh, and so I, I just want to say that because I thought that was really cool. Um, but so, you know, you're dealing with all the fall off from the last book, right? Like Rand used the power. What's going on? Moraine's not talking to him. Uh, Land's teaching him how to fight. And so it's like, right. oh, okay, okay, okay. We're going, we're going, we're going, we're going. The horn gets uh, put on Bane, gets let out. It's like, oh, like, you know, we're, we're back to, <laughs> yeah. we're, you know, we're back yeah. to like a, a, a sprint <laughs> again. Um, then it kind of falls off a little bit. Like for me, it's like, okay, hold on. Then, then you get to like the Deus de Mar stuff, de Mar stuff. You meet Tom. Um, you know, it's kind of a fall off, fall off, fall off. And then you meet like Celine and all this stuff. And they're like, again, same wow. thing. You get to the end, right. And the end of this book is like crazy. Like Wayne gets captured. Well, are we spoilers? Are we oh, we're spoilers? miles. But yeah, no, it's fine. Okay, fine. Mild, mild spoilers yeah. here. So, yeah. you know, like, some <laughs> no, stuff happens with some stuff happens with Wayne. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, um, 
you know, the stuff it's, with Inktar and, yeah. and and Matt yeah. and all that stuff. So, well, I think that's good. No, I think that's good. Let's, I mean, because to me, like, we're, so we're talking The Great Hunt, you know, and this is, honestly, this is one of my favorite books. And having read the whole series, I come back to it and I go, wow, this, this book is 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 really good and there's so many cool uh things in it it's kind of why I'm, I'm excited for the tv show to see really what they do what aspects of it they pull from what they add to it uh i think it's i think it's me you know honestly fantastic but the um so let's just have a little bit of a spoiler discussion about the great okay, that's hunt. fine yeah because right, well, let's, let's, we can we can dive into full spoilers here. yeah that's fine because <laughs> i think i think there's so many cool uh cool pieces nicole have you recently um so in the podcast we just got to to that point we where just we just it. finished, yeah. You just finished, yeah. Right, right. Okay, so did you listen to the? Did you happen to hear the episode where we talk about Inktar a little bit? Any of that? Yes, and let me tell you, I Come on, please tell because me because you talked about you were talking so much about how much you loved Inktar. Yeah, and I was like, am I remembering Inktar incorrectly? Because <laughs> I mean, it's not like I at the time I couldn't ask it because I didn't want to like spoil it for anyone, you know. But yeah. I also really just. Uh, I loved paying more attention this round. Like it's the quote that you went crazy about that um, yeah. something along the lines of no man can walk so long in the shadow that he can't return to the light. Let's, so, go. Let's go. I was like, I was like, Ooh, I was like, oh, I am not remembering that from the first time. So uh -huh. initially I was like, I must've thought Inktar was a dark friend, but he really wasn't. <laughs> and then yeah. I was like, well, maybe he's just trying to set Matt up, but um, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, the the Inktar episode is probably one of my favorite ones. Yeah, I, I just sure. I kept saying that to Matt, and and so you know as as we I yeah and, and I, we're I going, love it. like we're going along. I'm just like okay, I mean he's pretty cool. Is he gonna do something cool? I'm like, <laughs> whatever. I'm like I just think it's cool. He's just he just he just keeps referring to him as Lord Rant, you know, like all that stuff. And I thought that was right. Funny. So like the character that I love the most, right? Um, so the character that everyone has told me about, and like you know. The, his like who he is as a character um is matt and everyone said and of course my name is matt so i'm naturally gonna be like okay and i'm also kind of like a jokester all this yeah. stuff so i'm like oh yes. my god this is gonna be perfect like it's you know to me right this is gonna be awesome and up until this point i mean it's like god matt's like a whiny little you know uh -huh. uh, guy <laughs> yes. i mean my god man he's just complaining all the time um and so i feel like finally i got to see the character that everyone said i mean you see him at the very beginning right when he's like ah, i gotta steal pie and all, all this stuff right or yes um yeah. and so like now i feel like he's kind of back to that character and this is the character that everyone says like my brother jeremy who we reference a lot of the show he's like oh matt's like he, he loves matt right he's he, he describes he's like he's like he's like that guy who like walks he's in a tavern and he'll like you know pinch you know pinch like a girl in her butt or whatever you right. know, yeah like, right. that's like the kind of guy he is right and yeah. so um i'm just like oh man this guy's gonna be like you know this this guy's gonna be funny he's that comic relief kind of guy and so i literally when i'm reading the end of this and of course this is my first read right so i've i yeah. haven't read the series i haven't read the series before i mean people have kind of told me stuff so i know some of the some of the events but i don't know all like all of them certainly not in detail um so when i get when i get to the point to where they're like sneaking in to like to get the horn back and the dagger back and you've got like everyone's like got their own <laughs> mindset right Rand's like well guys you know maybe we should be like go oh, in should we wait right and then Inktar's like no we're going in now right, right, like, right. Like, <laughs> like like a joke it reminds me in star wars uh, attack of the clones right episode right. two when anakin and obi-wan are about to fight count dooku and obi-wan kenobi is like hey we're gonna take them together and anakin's like no i'm taking them now and he right, like, runs right. in and just gets like you know <laughs> pushed away and i'm like oh my god this is like exactly like what i what i was thinking of and so anyway so they're like sneaking in and like matt sees this girl this is like you can see through her dress he's like did you guys just see that I'm like dude <laughs> shut up man nearly like, gives them away <laughs> like gives them away and then like he gets to the horn and they're like you know they're they're trying to escape he like drops it and he like picks it back up he's like yeah it's fine it's like <laughs> it's like some ancient powerful relic that could right. literally save the entire world and you're like dropping it like yeah it'd be all right yeah and then, when he, and then when he blows when he blows the horn i lost i lost and i texted as i'm like oh like i am losing my mind here he's just like it doesn't say we can't blow it like, right yes because that is it something says that is it totally, has to be there for the last yeah, battle that's all that's it right. says like, yeah it's like it doesn't say it doesn't say it can't doesn't say i can't use it right? right it's like you know so it's like those bending of the rules and like i i love it so yeah so 
Yeah, Matt. Matt is hysterical. I I love that. Well, I for, I actually uh, even when we did that episode, I kind of forgot you were like where you kind of turns. You know, it's the idea we're on a sneaking mission. You know, what are you doing? Why are you blowing our cover? And I was like, oh yeah, that that's funny. Classic classic Matt. Um, so Nicole, like in in the Great Hunt, what were some of your favorite moments? I guess uh, or or favorite characters? Did you like Kieran? Does anybody else like Kieran the Sniffer? Yes, the Sniffer. Yeah. I love the Sniffer. Okay. I really like him. I, I figured I like you would like the sniffer and you wouldn't forget about the sniffing. So, you know. I did not forget about hearing. Okay. Not at all. Good. I have a special place in my heart for the sniffers. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, uh, I think it's just I the plan that Nynaeve hatches to bust egg. Oh, we Wait. did say we're. Oh, yeah. We, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we're, 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 <laughs> we're, like, I mean, I just talked about out. the horn of Valir. I just talked about the horn of Valir being blown. <laughs> So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, basically, the plan that they hatched to uh, free Egwene uh, from the Soldom. And just, uh, just that moment where the small kink in their plan, when the, uh, I think it's one of the other Soldom, they end up trapping her and putting the, uh, is it an Adam? Adam, yeah. Mm-hmm. Adam. Yeah on her neck and just that whole just like going with it it's like you know what this is an even better plan let's do it and yeah, just the yeah. bad assery yes, of yes. busting Egwene out of there and yes. when they free the one uh the one girl the one domine who like you worry she's so far gone that she's like got the Stockholm syndrome kind of thing going on, but she turns around and just punches the the chick in the mm. face. Yeah. It's like, yes. yes. Like, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. kind of like uh, in Harry Potter watching Umbridge get what's coming mm-hmm. to her. Mm-hmm. It's kind of that mm-hmm. same triumph good. feeling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So that is definitely stands out for sure from one of my favorite moments. Yeah. And that was a really interesting, you know, part that we're trying to learn about like the Shanchen, like, culture and and stuff and it's um it's abrupt i mean i I think jordan just kind of challenges you to say just keep reading you're just you know you're you're gonna get this and i'm gonna kind of continue to lay this out and give you little bits and pieces of their culture through these characters um because yeah it's 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 wild i mean I i think even if you were to kind of unleash or uncollar one of them i mean it's like what do what do i do like please don't do that like some of them were were so afraid that you know what I mean? Like that you're, we're all yeah. going to be punished. Like, oh my gosh. I mean, it's just such a crazy, crazy thing. And it causes us to completely, I don't know. What, well, what are your thoughts? I mean, on, on, on the Shanchin, since we're there and we're talking like, like at the end of the great hunt, it's, um, they're pretty terrible. They're invaders. First yeah, of all. Man, I really struggle with them. Like, I think I struggle with them more than I actually struggle with like the forsaken or the dark one. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. just because it is, it's, it's not like an, some entity some higher power doing something to lower or lesser beings it's it's, i mean it's human on human brutality like it's i mean it's slavery you know you guys have addressed that plenty of times but it's just like that cruelty like how do you do that to another person no matter where they're from and uh yeah i would actually say they are my i like them the least for sure yeah. Well, it, you followed know, was, closely by the white cloaks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what I was about yeah. to say. I felt like I felt like, like this. The, they were like they were this, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they were this book's white cloaks, right? Like, yeah, yeah. we need yeah. that kind of third and yeah, that third entity out there. That kind of a uh, the antagonist, so to speak. So yeah, yeah, not a well, fan. <laughs> I, I was thinking, you know, um, we often we were just talking about Matt and the dagger and and going to find that dagger and shot our Logoth. And that in the first book, when they talk about the corruption of Arad Hall and how kind of this evil Mordith shows up, and it's a place so evil, it's a different type of evil, right? That not even the Trollocs or the Murdral want to enter the city. And then later on in this book, in the second book, in The Great Hunt, when you see the Shanchen and you see what they're doing, you, you kind of can't believe it, right? It's not something that would that's accepted on this continent, and it just is radical, and it, it's another yeah. type of evil. Really, yeah. you know, and so we're kind of like, oh, wow. So it's not just all about the dark one. It is there's there's way yeah. more. And I think that's what's your what tears us and kind of, you know, we're, we're pulled this way, then we're pulled back this way. So that's uh, what I find fascinating about, you know, Jordan's writing. So and kind of the thing that makes it 
more terrifying in a way is that it is a whole new kind of evil that is born out of humans. It's not, it isn't something not of our world. It's like, it could be you just as easily as it could be me. And yes. that is, you know, that's probably incredibly terrifying for, you know, everybody living in this universe. Yeah. Well, th that's why, you know, um, Sir Matt, I, I mentioned a lot that um, uh, Inktar, right? So I, right. I think what is, and I'm hoping what they do in the show is that they introduce Inktar much sooner and, and we kind of like him, fall in love with him, think he's think he's yeah. cool, we, we, uh, we respect him or whatever, but maybe if you're paying really close attention, you can notice a few things that are a little bit off, right? Um, to the point where by the end, you're like, wait a second, this was a someone who I trusted who was right next to me the whole time. How scary is that? Because when Matt and Rand are being pursued, after the merge roll attacks, you know, Tom kind of uh, takes care of the merge roll and then they're they're bouncing out of Four Kings. Um, they get pursued by several dark friends. And so you're you're like, oh, this is kind of scary. We're talking back in the eye of the world. You have Shadow Spawn, which are scary. But then it's scary to know that, wait a second, people that look like you and I are yeah. dark friends. And then to have someone who is a Shannaran who is fighting against the shadow and that's their whole thing be it's that his person whole existence i mean it yeah. was just, whole existence <laughs> yeah and, and it's just and, but the, the crazy thing to me is that like when you hear him talk about that at the end of the book it's like he just for a moment he he lost hope for just a moment and he thought it would be just one thing maybe one alliance it's almost like i'm going to continue to fight the shadow as much as i can but I'm going to have a plan, not just a plan B is plan, you know, but like a plan C or D or whatever. And I'm going to go way back here. And this, this very small part, this, this weakness, and I'm going to try to make some, you know, alliance or whatever. I don't, I think he regretted it from the start, but it, it's just, um, it's crazy. I've been taking, you know, Matt back to the conversation, the man named Boars, right. And looking at the dark friend social yeah. and seeing who's there. And, and I, we're not going to, I know I was going to say, are. you know, my recent revelation. Yes, I do. And so we're going to save that because that is, uh, <laughs> that's like, what? <laughs> I do also uh, love that we call it the dark friend social, right? Like it's, you know, oh, like, I, yeah. yeah. I didn't know that when I first read it and I, it was afterwards. Is that what people, is that, is that what people that call should it? Be, like, in the, in the that community? should be like a, that should be like a extra Patreon content is like dark the friend dark social. friend social. I mean, yeah, 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 that would be kind of cool. That would be. I mean, I'm gonna have to find someone else to run that because you know me, I fight for the light. All right, I'm we could all come that. masked, like <laughs> yeah, everybody okay. else oh, yeah. at the dark friend social, and you've got to guess uh, who we are. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So but, you know that there's so many little clues in that, and that's that's where I say. Yeah, uh, so Nicole, without talking about that part, because it's later on in book, uh, well, you're right, you're in book four. Um, yeah. But later on, you you learn other things that happened in like book two, and it's stuff that happened in book one. It, it, you, there's payoff way down the road. So I I just think like that's good writing. That's really good writing. You're paying yeah. attention, and this is all kind of laid out. And don't worry, we're gonna weave this back in. Um, and it's it's subtle enough that it doesn't ruin anything. You know, you almost forget it and you get caught up in these other characters. And then you're like, holy smokes. Yeah. I didn't see that coming. And that's that's great. That's an experience we want as a reader. So I'm glad you had that and experience. It, and it was kind of cool because the way that uh, the way it opened with the Dark Friend Social, I mean, I was scrutinizing every character throughout that book. Like, which one of you is Boars? Which one of you, you know? Yes. Yeah. Trying I know, to me figure too. I was out thinking about that. Who is yeah. who? Right. And, right. Uh, and the, so and the, Matt, have you yeah. have you read just the prologue of the next book, The Dragon Report? Yeah, yeah, I have. I yeah, I've read that, and because we're we're we're, we're going to be doing that episode for the podcast, so I I have read that. Yeah, and I, I'm a, I'm no. in, I'm a, I'm a couple chapters in to to the okay. next book. Don't worry, Ezra. I'm not going to spoil okay. anything. I'm okay. just like based on that alone. So we have the assumption, the Ordeeth. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. we meet him in that yep. prologue yes and anybody mm -hmm. else think he sounds like he could be pat on fane <laughs> mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. yep more deeth or yes. deeth i know yeah, i literally I know. when you said more deeth I, I was like oh my god because i've uh, always said more death more de more <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah more death yeah. and so i just had i was like oh my god i just had a moment yeah. And well, just wait. I'll just say, wait. That's all I'll just say. wait until that's the fine. show comes that's out. Fine. Yes. Just wait until the show comes out and they change the way all the names are pronounced, right? And everyone's Dog. like, "What is gonna?" Because we deal with that. We deal with that in Game of Thrones, where it's like, okay, yeah. 
you know, the show says one way, the <laughs> audio book says another way. There's, there's other audio books done by different narrators say it this yeah. way. And then like George R. R. Martin says it this way. And so uh-huh. it's, and I, I mean, think it's, he it's gets be, to be kind of the definitive the boss. decision I know, there. But people, people blast us <laughs> yeah. when we say it one way or another, they're like, well, this is how it is. And so well, so it's going to be the same thing. Just wait for the show. And when, when they, when they change a lot of the, the, you know, <laughs> the way so, these people's names are pronounced wh- why you brought that up guys i've never brought this up um we often say tarvalon and i think it's tarvalon just so you guys know like that's how robert jordan said it according to again this is matt hatch at the dusty wheel who i was watching at one point and someone in the comments was like giving him grief about how he says tarvalon and he was like let okay he was you know yeah. like enough grief <laughs> and he finally went and said this is w- how the author says it so i choose to say it. i never get on people for their pronunciations because it's like it's a fantasy series these are like crazy we're talking about like yeah y- yeah people's names and stuff so it's uh it's interesting but um before we leave um this episode or before we wrap this up i wanted to ask you guys about a couple more things in the great hunt so the one of the things that fascinated me in that in this book is um the portal stones. What did you think about that whole experience with the portal stone and Varen is helping Rand? Varen has no idea how to use it. She's just covering for Rand and saying yeah. kind of like, oh, let me cover for you while we, you know, travel. <laughs> They're gone for like several months. I mean, yeah. which, is, which is crazy. And they experience these different you know, lives. So I guess, Nicole, I'll start with you. What were your thoughts just in general on that? That's one of those things uh, where I think stuff starts to level off and you're like, Oh, don't worry. There's this new thing. Here you go. You know? Yeah. Um, it was, it was for sure insane, but I, I think one of the things that I want to know most is the, the lives that the other people within that group, at least the main ones, uh, lived like how Matt comes up to him and he's like, you know, I would never betray you, you know, and just right, like recognizing like maybe there is some universe or some, trip around the wheel where Matt does uh, betray him. And, um, you know, just based on some of the things that like comments that are made in relation, you know, like how we get a a really good glimpse into Ingtar because he kind of gets a little bit frenzied at that point about like, no, like I, like I I will not be a part of the shadow kind of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. like, I want to know what Baron lived because I still look at Baron like this sometimes, like, yeah, I'm just not sure about you. (laughs) And, uh, and so I just, I, I, how cool would it be to experience, have an experience like that where all these different versions of your life flash before your eyes and, like how hard would it be to separate like for Matt in, in particular, like how hard will it be for him now to separate this trip around the wheel of time from all of those other things, like knowing like in one of these versions of life, I betrayed Rand and right. probably kind of becomes a little bit of a filter for how he's viewing life right now. Yeah, what's what's really interesting is I, I think about like even if I were to have like a dream about something that happened, like um, you know losing a loved one or whatever, and then yeah. you wake up from that and you go, I'm going to because I had that dream, I'm going to call that person right now and tell them how I feel. So I kind of think like you, like it's weird because not only did they see those other uh, possibilities or whatever, um, those worlds of maybe or what could have been or what have you, they actually had an experience they legitimately did travel they on the thread the path that they're on they did have that experience and so because they did it does i think change them you know and i think that's that's the thing is that when we have when we encounter that type of stuff in our life it causes us to say yeah let's be let's rethink this or let's self-evaluate and and it should make us better uh people so yeah i just thought that was crazy it's such a kind of a trippy trippy thing for him to be going through and i'm like uh what's with all the flickering what what are we doing? We're flick, flicker, <laughs> yeah. flicker, Changing, flicker. Like the 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 like TV show goes out on you, like the signal uh, yeah. fades on you for a minute. I'm also yeah. curious if this round with the portal stones and the flickering and all of that is that part of the pattern for mm. this round, oh, okay. for this life. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's interesting. That that is interesting. Yeah, I, I I just love it. I mean, I think there's so many there's so many cool things, and I can't wait because I know there are more things to come we'll say that in the series there's a lot more 
uh, you know, coming down the line. You said something interesting though, Nicole, about like uh, Varen and kind of having that sort of like, I think every Aes Sedai, when I was first reading, I was like, <laughs> oh, a good point. I mean, Tom Marilyn has Don't me trust going. Him. I, like, how, well, especially the, because, on. especially you're because this one. time, <laughs> especially because this time we meet an Aes Sedai who we shouldn't have trusted. Leandrin, that's right. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that was crazy. She is. I'll, I'll say it. Black Aja. I mean, yeah. that was mm -hmm. crazy. That was crazy. I and that was and it happens like right away. You 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 heard that you know ah oh, the Black Aja doesn't exist. Friends, it exists. Okay, well, it does. It does. It does. Wow. I almost said a spoiler. I'm glad I didn't. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. get dark. We got dark friends. I'm like, no. I'm <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it is. Uh, so that to me, I think is we we always kind of look at them and we're told not to trust them. And really, Tom Marilyn, like his experience. First of all, I love Tom Marilyn. That's one of my favorite characters as well. Like, like is, throughout the whole he series. He is badass. Yes, he is. I really I mean, like him. Uh, just the stuff that he does and uh, Robert Jordan doesn't even need to really tell us a whole lot. We can kind of figure out for ourselves what he did in Kyrian, like what he did or yeah. 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 And so, so that's pretty neat. And his, his story is epic, but it's because of Tom that our, a lot of our characters are mistrusting of Aes Sedai. And again, they already kind of had that, I guess, in Emmons field. I mean, uh, you know, yeah. they're so far removed from everything that like anyone kind of seems strange. It's kind of like in the fellowship when the hobbits think about someone from Bywater, even other hobbits in Bywater are a little strange. Those hobbits over there yeah. are a little bit crazy because they're so far away and they just don't get out much, you know? So kind of reminds me of our Emmons fielders a little bit. So, uh, yeah. gosh. All right. Awesome. Well, that was, uh, just, yeah, that was our spoiler discussion on the great hunt. <laughs> uh, so we hope you guys kind of enjoyed that. If you have, uh, you know, your favorite moments or uh, characters that you liked in the book or you want to even talk about, you know, some of the show, how we're going to adapt certain aspects of it. Notice that during The Great Hunt, we did not talk about Moraine very much. There's good reason for that, right? She's not around. So uh, we can do some follow up conversation on that, which I think is fascinating. Uh, but leave us a comment down below. Please like, subscribe and remember that the grave is no bar to our call. <laughs>